Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called the High Value Woman. The ingredients call for four tablespoons of vodka, two tablespoons of lime juice, a half a tablespoon of simple syrup, and for the garnish, you're going to have a lime wedge or wheel. So you're going to add the vodka, the lime juice, and the syrup to a cocktail shaker, fill with a handful of ice, and shake until cold. Strain the drink into a coupe or martini glass and top with a splash of soda water, if desired. Garnish with a lime wedge or wheel and serve a high-value woman. Mm. I felt like I had to read it in a very like smooth, sexy voice because I just want to take a moment to recognize all of the high value women out there. So often we talk about the high value man, which I love them, <laughs> but it's <laughs> not really sure if it's a real thing. But the <laughs> women of high value in this world that are making the world turn and giving babies to the world and just living your life shout out to y'all I just I love women I love when I hop on Instagram and I see a new black owned women company Mm -hmm. or just a woman owned company in in general like I love how women make things happen no matter how little that we have no matter if we have support no matter if you have kids no matter if your nigga left you no matter if you sad and depressed and ready to jump off the bridge you still making it work you running that company you talking your shit and shout out to you yes yeah, so women are quite resilient welcome back to cocktails dirty discussions you guys hey y'all um so what's been going on it sounds like a lot of women empowerment did you go to a women empowerment <laughs> conference what is going on i haven't been to a women's just empowerment just feeling the spirit of the woman you know, I love women too. I'm a girl's girl. I love, I just love women. You know, I recently just had one of my very close friends give birth to her first child. And I heard she was it's so scared, rightfully so, mm-hmm. and so nervous and just embarking into motherhood, which I one day hope to do. Mm-hmm. And just watching her do this and doing what like your body was made to do, no matter how scared or if you think you couldn't do it or if you Mm -hmm. do a home birth or if you do it in the hospital, your body is prepared to do what it needs to do to like nourish a human being. Yeah, it's just like nature. I always think when I think about any body process, but especially creating a whole human life. And then getting it out of you. Mm. It's crazy how you don't know all of the things that are going on, like in your mind, but your body knows because it's just nature. It's funny you say that she had a baby because she had the same due date as my friend. She did. And um, she had her baby too. And it was funny. Same day? Well, the day that your friend went into labor is the day my friend uh, had the baby. Wow. And um, I don't want to tell too much because she probably will wait to say anything online. But Mm -hmm. she did have a baby. The baby is healthy. She's healthy. It didn't take all day. We were very anxious because she let us know that the water broke. She showed us the spot on the couch. And then we were, like, anxious. But then I was like, okay, I don't want to worry her. Because, you know, like, whether it's something like a baby or anything where you're waiting for news, waiting for updates, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing— Like it gets stressful on you. Mm -hmm. And so when people are constantly asking you questions and updates, I know I get irritated because it's like it's too much. I don't have an update. I will share an update. Y'all not about to worry me. I will turn the shit off. So I was happy that we didn't annoy her. Mm -hmm. And she shared pictures, um, a lot of really graphic pictures, which I find quite fascinating because the human body is just something else. I'm like, you pushed a whole, you made a human and then you pushed him out. And then here you are nursing him. And I the joy of creating a life the it was just happy joy. and i can live vicariously through her ah just such a cute little bundle of joy yeah it is just it just brings you a whole new it just reminds you like as women we're just what phenomenal we can do. yeah it's just mm-hmm. like we're phenomenal creatures and no one should ever forget that if anybody is diminishing your light as a woman in your life fucking push them off the bridge i mean don't put don't push them off the bridge that but, was a joke yeah <laughs> but get them out of your life because one thing i don't like is your nigga that's not gonna value a woman mm, yeah you've got to go you gotta go you gotta go right now um but another thing that i have been doing is just like supporting the people around me mm-hmm. trying to make sure this year that i am more present 
than I have been in the past. Mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets, but making sure that I am as present as I want people to be in my life. If they, if respectfully, you know what I mean? Like just uh, my brother, he is an actor. He is a writer for film and he is a director. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really dope that you ever just be so proud of your siblings. Mm -hmm. And when they don't always share like, their successes, even though I'm going to know because, nigga, I be watching the Instagram stories and I click the links. I understand that sometimes when we had Remo on, we talked about sometimes how you might not share things with your family, mm -hmm. but I do pay attention to what you have going on. Mm -hmm. And it can be stressful to share things with your family because especially in entertainment, family has helped you a lot. Family is waiting for you to pay their bills. Family <laughs> is waiting for you to pay them back. Ooh. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. I, I have been following my brother's career since he wanted to be an actor and have always believed in him. And Kiki, when I tell you, I'm so proud of my brother. If you guys aren't following my brother, follow his Instagram, Malik J. Ali. Follow his actor's school, uh, Acts of Freedom. He was a guest on a previous episode, so you should find that. He was also, he made it to the highlights for last year, too. He did. And he has just been working on his craft since as long as I can remember, whether mm -hmm. he has been acknowledged for it or not. I remember, I feel like I went with you to a play or something when he was in college or something. It was some something that we went to. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And so he is just like, I love when people like to do something and they really like... Pour into it. Pour their whole... They're like, okay, I'm not getting the acting gigs. Let me write. Okay, people not seeing my writing, let me direct. And so when I went to my brother's premiere. Wait, what is this a premiere for? Uh, he directed a movie. It's called Colored Tags. It was written by Jonathan O'Neill. Color tag? Colored Tags? Colored Tags. Colored Tags. And uh, I saw it on his Instagram. I went ahead and like bought oh my, my tickets. God. Me and my bae made it a little date night. It was at uh, the Plaza Theater off Ponce de Leon and... Nice I, little venue. Nice little venue. And they had a nice little turnout. And I always get so mad at my brother because he does this thing with ticketing where he's like, they do this thing where you can buy your ticket based off of what you want to pay. Mm, mm -hmm. You can pay a $1, you can pay $100. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, get what you worth. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I understand a creator's budget. Because he's an artiste. He's an artiste. <laughs> and I went, my boyfriend went and... You know how sometimes when you are supporting someone that you know, whether it's a relative or a friend, and you're just going because you're supporting, you don't necessarily know if it's going to be good. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not. Majority of the time it's not. Sometimes you go and you support people and you're like, oh, you, <laughs> you didn't have to say majority, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> but I'm serious. Somebody, a friend sends you their mixtape or a friend sends you their, and you're like, you need to go get a job at FedEx. Like I, you need, you, this is not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. I went. Again, my brother didn't know I was going. I went and I go to the event and I wait. How did he not know you were going? And it's here in Atlanta. He thought you was gonna go. He, my brother, he's a he boy, wouldn't he's tell a guy. You. He's not like, hey, are you coming tonight? I got there. He was like, oh, you. I was like, yeah. Like, duh. <laughs> you know how guys don't talk. Well, they're not like us. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm coming. Everybody. I'm saving you a seat. You're gonna be this reserved. You need Women to be and there. Men are different, <laughs> and this is why we birth the children and they don't. Malik is just very much like. If you see what I'm doing, and if you don't, cool. If you do, mm -hmm. cool, come. He's not going to, like, project a lot. And so we go. I walk in. I do a whole little reel. I'm like, oh, okay, director. He was dressed like a director, looking all directory. Like, I know he hates when we do this, but I'm so proud of him. So we go. I'm sitting down. My boyfriend's acting like asking all these questions. Like, what is it about? I'm like, honestly, don't know. He, mm -hmm. he hasn't told me about this film. Mm -hmm. So we're going to watch a portion of this short film. And like I said, sometimes when you go support people that you know, you're just going because you want them to know that you support them. It might not necessarily be good. Mm -hmm. Here, when I tell you I wanted more, mm -hmm. I said, bitch, this a whole Netflix special. They had a and a after. The way that this film is called Colored Tags, written by Jonathan O'Neill and directed by my brother. And what I also didn't know was my cousin... Corey, the way that these things have my cousin Cameron, sorry, he has a brand called Good Garments. Mm -hmm. The wardrobe, the person who was in charge of wardrobe for this short film was looking for all black designers. They ended mm -hmm. up being all black men designers. But that wasn't the plan. She wanted all black designers, but ended up being all black male designers. And she w wanted this one brand to be in the film. And she was like, dang, like, I don't know if we're going to be able to afford it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So she still sent them an email. He was like, oh, yeah, like I've been wanting to be in one of my cousin's films. 
not even knowing know. that it she was reaching out about Malik's film mm-hmm. and Cam didn't know that it was Malik's that film. That it was Malik's film. And then when she told him the shit, he was like, oh yeah. She was like, wait a minute, what? And they talked about all this at the premiere and just being there with my cousin who went to school to be a pharmacist and decided that he didn't want to do that anymore. And he wanted to be a designer and it's working out for him. He has mm-hmm. a he has a store in Pont City Market at Citizen Supply. I was about to say, it's in the, the big thing. I always forget the name of that place. I've seen it. Yes, I wear a lot of his brand all of the time because I actually do like it. And it's for him and my brother to be able to work together I mean, it was just a, this moment of like, wow, this is my brother's year. This mm-hmm. is the year that he gets to like reap all of the benefits of all of the hardships, all of the, he's been working on so many different films and writing and directing and acting. He has an acting school and all of his actors were used in the films that he has recently done. There was another film festival, my girlfriend, Ayana, who was also my hot yoga instructor. She was like, Hey, I'm going to this film festival. You want to come? I look it up and I was like, Oh, my brother got a film in this. I hit my brother up. I'm like, Hey, you going to this? He was like, yeah, I got two films. And I was like, Oh shit, he got two films. And I didn't know he had two. I thought he got one. He did one with my ex-boyfriend, Carlos. It's mm-hmm. called uh, Rainbow in the Sun. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, it's just been like me looking, making sure that I'm making time for the people in my life that have made time for me. Mm-hmm. And when we were at, you know, like doing our stuff and supporting us. And, you know, Malik came and helped out when we were doing our live shows in Atlanta, helping direct some of the scenes that we had live actors for if you came for to our Valentine's Atlanta show. show. Yeah. And going to that premiere, it was just such, it was so cool. There were people that were asking my brother, like all these director questions and being able to be there and witness it, it brought so much joy Mm -hmm. to my soul. Like, come on. Like if you know an actor, you know, these niggas be trying to try and eat. Yeah. It can be really hard. And it's, it's a job that it's not just about your skill and your talent. It's there's luck involved mm-hmm. and who you know and just chance because there's plenty of talented people who aren't getting booked and you mm-hmm. just never know if it's going to be you or not. You can study, you can go to the best schools. Everybody at Yale is not an A-list star, mm-hmm. you know? Everybody at Juilliard. Yeah, it just, it doesn't work that way. But that's really good. And I'm glad that you're doing that. I think that's really important. I talk to people about that a lot. Like just showing up for people. Um, no matter how big or small their something is, I think that it's good. I know I feel really good when people do it for me, especially mm-hmm. when it's a surprise. But most of my friends gonna tell me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's nice when people show up and, and when you're they not support. Expecting it. Yeah, I remember when we were in DC and my cousin Natalie. She intimidated me so bad when I was at Howard. Like that was the first time somebody had really made me feel that way. I didn't even know the emotion, but. She taught me so much and she bought tickets, brought a friend and she showed up and she was like, of course I would be there. And that's somebody where like your brother, I didn't say anything to her. I didn't think that she would want to come to anything like that. I didn't think she would care. It feels good. So if you guys are listening to us and you know somebody who's doing something, do something to support um, whether it's a business, a hobby, just something they're trying out, support them, show up to the shows, mm-hmm. purchase their things. I think it goes a long way it and it, fe- it feels good to do it. But then when you're on the receiving end, it feels good. And trust me, people notice. And if they don't, well, that's rude. But <laughs> most people notice. Mm-hmm. You got to show up. I've been doing a lot of DIY projects. Oh, like what? I put wallpaper up in my hallway. How was that? Kiki? Did you do peel and stick or like traditional? All right. No, traditional doesn't even exist anymore. No one would do that. I did the peel and stick. However, uh-huh. you still do have to apply a nut, like adhesive. You uh-huh. can't just like take it off and stick it on the wall. It's still like some some technique to it uh-huh. bitch bitch that's hard work i'm addicted to wallpaper now i just want to smack it up in all the rooms because it's like did you do a good job it's i might need to hire you let me send you i'm gonna send you like how i, I didn't order enough wallpaper i don't want to do it i'm saying i want you to do it oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I want okay. some wallpaper on an accent while i was just looking at it i watched my sister do it it, I'll tell you about that. Later, I did a crocodile print black wallpaper. Is it in the textured? Hallway. It's textured. That's what Mallory did in her salon. Really? Yes. I but. absolutely love it. It added so much because I'm like, okay, now me and my man live together, and this is a man that I would love to be with for the rest of my life, and we're cohabitating right now, and we're trying to not hire an interior designer. We're like, let's do this you ourselves. Do it. Yeah, let, let's let it represent us. There is this couple. It's a gay couple. Their names are Matt and Josh, I believe 
on Instagram. Do you follow them? Mm-hmm. Kiara. <laughs> what are, the, are they interior designers? Or they no, just they nice just home? two gay men that be playing in the house and somebody got are a lot black? of money. No, they're white. One's mm-hmm. Filipino and one is white. I love oh, no, these I niggas. I be in the comments like, I love y'all. Can you be my friend? Nobody responds. Yeah. They decorate the garage. They decorate every part of the house to like what they want it to be. Mm-hmm. The hallway. They're like, let's make this fun. Like they have accents and it's like so cute. They're like, let's put an octopus lamp in the hallway and put a wall and so like we're just trying to like make this space even mm. though this is not the fee- the forever home a space sure that home. is like equally us because right now it's him and i had to tell him i was like baby too masculine this is looking very masculine you want gray and black all over the place no we got to add some pops of color like while i did do the black crocodile wall it's like it had a texture he would have never thought to do that he was like i don't know about this i was like let me let me just show that you that should be looking good it looks so in the hallway so small that it just when you walk into that area it look it just feels like a little cozy coffee place mm. but you just walk into the bathroom because that's all you can go to <laughs> okay. and it's so we're like trying to like make these things like our space if we can DIY it then we'll DIY it if somebody needs to be hired then like hire it but I'm like I want to try to like tap into my like inner housewife ultimate housewife responsibility because that's mm-hmm. what I want mm-hmm. oh we know it <laughs> we know it and i'm praying for you that you get that okay Thank you, sis. you're welcome um i went to go see the color purple did you mm-hmm. see it no i haven't seen it okay are you do you want to or are you like, i do want to see it um i should have gone when i was in texas for christmas when it came out my mom said she would go see it with me i just felt horrible the whole time you were I was sick. sick. Yeah, I was sick. So the whole time, and I was just like, I can't do it. I just lay down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got Whitley, and um, she's not going to let me go anywhere. And I, I don't want to be that mom bringing her crying baby to the theater. She hasn't cried once. I feel like she, Whitley can I'm just go. saying that really is no dogs allowed. And so then I was like, well, what about the drive in theater? <laughs> But they don't have it. So I haven't seen it yet. I do want to see it, though. Okay. Do y'all I, know any dog-friendly theaters? Now I'm that person. What's dog-friendly on Yelp? I feel I like you could any. also go in, like, the only people that are strict with the dog rules is the airport. But I feel like if you went to the dog, I mean, the the movie theater, and you were like, this is a service dog, they're not mm-hmm. going to challenge you. Because technically that's illegal to challenge somebody and be like, what's mm-hmm. your, what is wrong with you? You could sue I'm them. depressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a movie that I watched on Netflix. It's called The Nest. Have you watched it? I haven't. It's on my list. Please watch it, Kira. But it's what a diary is it of a about? mad white woman. Okay, because I tried to start it the other day, and then I was like, I'm too sleepy. I'm going to end up starting this over. Get in the bed, bitch. Why do you feel like you have to stay up till 3 a.m. every day? I honestly feel like they should play this in all Atlanta clubs before the music starts. The move, Girl, what? Why? Because it's showing how niggas lie about what they have. It's showing how niggas lie about like the funds that they have in their bank account and how they finesse. Oh, I did get that far because okay, they bitch. moved into a I damn castle like, and he was and he said he paid the rent up for a year. Why would you move into a castle and have rent? And I said, you know what? Um, that's when I knew. Okay, I gotta pay attention because it's you gonna be some attention. tricky shit. I can't watch this right now. And it ain't even really that tricky. It's what's nigg- but niggas. But I don't want to miss Atlanta. nothing. I need to see everything on the screen. I need to hear everything. It's a great watch. Okay, well, it's Great on my list. Watch. I'll watch it. Make sure you watch it. If you guys are listening or watching, because we do have a YouTube channel. We found out a couple weeks ago that some of y'all didn't know we had a YouTube channel. Make <laughs> sure you're watching us. The facial expressions are phenomenal. <laughs> um, dang, I hate to, like, make this dark, but I had two cousins pass away. Oh, no. In the course of two weeks absolutely absurd one of the cousins i was just getting to know i felt like you you know how you uh-huh. tap in with your family mm-hmm. found out i had a cousin in philly i found this out when we went to philly for our okay. live show she owns a company owned a company local artesian foods um if you guys live in philly and you've ever heard of the french toast bites sharice mcgill owned it she's my cousin and my mm-hmm. mom had connected us when i went to philly we were talking. She sent, she was planning on sending me some of her French toast bites, seasoning, and the beer, and the coffee. What's the name of the place? Uh, the company is called Local Artesian Foods. If you look it up on I'm Instagram, that's what it is. Ask her. Ask her if she knows about the French toast she bites. She loves breakfast. Had a deal with the 76ers. The, mm-hmm. the, everything you think of in Philly. She was basically like the Waffle House in Philly. 
for breakfast. They told they called her French toast bay. <laughs> we had been communicating. We had been talking. I talked about getting her on the show. I talk, she ordered the via hemp. Uh -huh. She, I mean, she, she was just such a delight getting to know. And she randomly, suddenly passed away. And my mom hit me up, know. and I was just like. It was very uh, jarring because it's like mm -hmm. when you, uh, even though like we know that everybody has to die, we're all going to go. It's just jarring when somebody's at the height of their career and you just get, you just get taken away from it. Mm -hmm. um, it was really sad. And so I was like, you know what, I want to, I had talked to her about, um, she had hit me up. She was like, hey, I see you came in with a coffee mug. The coffee is not a date. A coffee bean bean. She's like, have you ever thought about having your own coffee line? And I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She has a coffee line, mm -hmm. had a coffee line. And so we were talking about like bringing this thing to fruition. I was like, I've been talking about doing something like this for two years. Yeah. Didn't really know how to do it. She said, oh, I got you. I'm going to mm -hmm. connect you to my coffee people. Mm -hmm. She it's passed away. We were supposed to reconnect about it the next week and oh. she died. Crazy. Just crazy. Maybe it'll come to you in a dream. She'll come to you in a dream. Maybe she'll come to me in a dream. She still sent me the contact and I okay. sent them an email and mm -hmm. was like, I would love to still like bring something like this to light in honor of her. Cool. And uh, yeah, so I have just been living my little life, doing my little thing. I went to a car meetup with my boyfriend and I said, you know what? What do you do at a car meetup? Kiki, this is, it is like why. like the drive-in movie? No. Or is it like Sonic back in the day when they would have the old school cars all come to Sonic on one day and then all the people pop their hoods yes. and pop the trunk and they just walk around and talk about it? That's what it's like. But this is what I said. This this <laughs> last one I said, well, I go to a lot. My boyfriend, he owns classic old school vehicles and he builds them up. And right now he has a... I'm so sorry if I'm wrong. And if you see a song, you're like, you lied. I don't know. It's but just I think, a mistake. Yeah. It's either an 86 or a 96 Impala. And then he has a some, something Chevelle. And it's the Chevelle <laughs> is very sexy. It is very And it's not even done yet. But, like, he, will, he always wants me to come to these car meetups with him. Uh-huh. And what I have started to realize is the women who complain about not being able to meet, like, really good, like, dateable men... I had this whole epiphany last weekend when I went to this meetup with him. Sometimes it's in a, a specific meetup. Because they ain't got no like, hobbies. They don't have, but here's <laughs> the thing, and I'm about to put y'all on some game. If you meet a nigga that has a car hobby, not a Lego car hobby, but like an <laughs> actual. That you can drive. That you could drive and he pours into it and he builds it up. It is it is not cheap to do that. I just want to tell you that. That's what I was that. thinking. It is it's still a car. Cheap. It's still a car. And even though it might be a 70s, a 60s, a 80s, whatever. Sometimes that makes it pricier because they're not making that shit No, like it, that. Not some, it makes it pricier. Mm -hmm. And they pour what they want to pour into this car. And what I have realized going to these car meetups is the guys are so nice. They are great catches. Okay, I bet they can change a tire. They too. can change. Not only can they change and a tire, jumps, they can change the, the oil. What you call it? Spicing it spice up. Spice up the car. They can spice up the car. And if and, I mean, it's just like I was like, baby, I was like, the men that have the the type of interest in the old school vehicle, like building it up from a nothing. Because my boyfriend will buy these cars, and it's nothing. It's a it's a scrap piece of metal. It doesn't even work. They, it's a project. It's something about That's their at the brain. house, not the club. <laughs> they enjoy spending thousands of dollars on something that is going to break down. It's going to break down. The air condition is going to go out. I'm telling you right now. And they're going to pay to get it done. So you already know they have the means to do this. This isn't like a broke man sport. You got to have it. And also on top of that, it's like the men that I have met. When I go to these car meetups, I'm not just right under his butthole. I'm talking I'm talking to the niggas. I'm like, hey, y'all. Oh, my gosh. What are you doing? I'm looking out for my friends. I want to start trying to match make. And I'm trying to find places where, like, men are great catches. And I have really noticed that the men that are involved in these old school cars, they got to own it, Don't, not just promoting the event. They own these cars. They have multiple cars. They are really great catches. They have mm -hmm. something that they pour into. They love it. And they treat things not, like how somebody takes care of what they have means a lot. And That's it says true. a lot about what they'll be in a relationship. So this past one that I went to, it was at Catch Kitchen and Cocktails, which it was in Tucker, but don't get run off. It was a That's where people buy homes. Kiki, FYI. it was a really good, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I wish I would have told, I didn't, 
Babe just, he just popped it up on me. He said, this is what we're going to do. And I went, I was like, dang, I wish I would have been able to tell my bitches about this. <laughs> because like the men were out there, they had their hoods pop. Then cars are nice. Mm -hmm. And then you could go in and have some drinks or eat some food. There was brunch going on. The the women were walking around looking at the cars, talking to the men like, oh, like, so tell me about this car. It's just such a great way to organically meet a, a good man. Mm-hmm. A good man, Savannah. <laughs> Y'all better get on Facebook and look at the car meetups. I have never um, been to one of those, but it did make me think. I do know a few guys who are into old school cars, classic cars, and they like to fix them up. And they also, everyone that I know, they're also into um, upgrading the homes that they own. Do you mm. hear what I'm saying? Um, I think you should think about those things. And while I personally don't like to drive out to the burbs, maybe some of you guys who are wondering where you should meet men, we talk about in the hotel lobbies and all of that, but maybe you should go venture out. Go to the Home Depot that's in Dunwoody or Sandy Springs or Tucker. Tucker. Or further out. Um, you might have some luck there. Just get some plants and shit. You need to make a purchase. Don't be walking around looking stupid. You yeah. need to buy some seeds. Maybe buy some herbs, uh, something that you could cook with. Send that signal. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, try some things out. But yeah. Mm. Try some of those things out because I, I really, I literally, I put it in the notes. I was like, I'm going to tell the girls that this is actually a very great way to meet a good man now if you are not a good woman don't you dare bring your big old ass over here and 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 corrupt these men because they are good guys now how you know they good men well you just saying that they could be up to no good <laughs> they but they love be. their cars so they're gonna be on good behavior yeah because they're in front of their babies these damn cars just that can't try it back. i think that anybody that pours that much into anything that's gonna break down will pour into your old broke down self <sighs> You should hope. Maybe he'll fix whatever you want fixed for you. That foot been hurting. That hip's been out of place. You need some new glasses. You can start small. Okay. Pure is the only luxury European brand of personal intimate products sold in North America. Personal lubricant is the most accessible, easy to use sexual aid that you can add to your sexual health routine that guarantees increased pleasure, whether you're masturbating or playing with a partner. You know, um, one thing that I have learned about Pure by looking through all of their product lines because they have some amazing things and they sent me a nice package so I could try out all the different ones. Something to be um, aware of is are the lubricants compatible with condoms? And I'm here to mm. let you know that all of their water-based formulas are compatible with latex condoms. And then the silicone-based formulas are compatible with more than just latex. So they're compatible with the latex, polyurethane, and polyisoprene condoms. Now, I didn't know what that last word was, and I had to look it up. And it's those ones, it's like a rubbery latex material where mm. it's a lot Thinner. So maybe if you've seen like the skin brand or something like that, it gives you that ultra close feel. So I know that, you know, it's important to practice safe sex, but you still want it to feel good and pure is your girl. Also, for all my sensitive vagina girlies out there, if you're like me, it's really important that I don't use lubes that have glycerin, parabens, preservative flavors, fragrances. You would think that in 2024, companies know that, but that always, almost always throws off my pH balance. I really love that Pure doesn't contain any of those things that I just listed. Mm -hmm. I love it too. It really makes the world of difference because you want everything about it start beginning and next day with your lubricant to be a pleasurable experience. No crazy trips to the dock. So right. right now, Pure is offering our listeners 5% off with your order with our code cocktails at C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. Just go to cocktailspodcast.com, click Pure and use promo code cocktails to get 5% off your next favorite lube. That's mm -hmm. pure P J U R at cocktailspodcast.com and use code cocktails. Please support our show by using the link in our in our episode description. Um well I I feel like we recorded some episodes, but then we had guests last time we were here, so we didn't really get to catch up much. Mm -hmm. Um I did go home. I was sick. 
for the holidays. So that really sucked. But you had I, strep, right? Um, I ended up having strep. But even before that, I was having like stomach issues. I just didn't want to tell everybody. I was just really gassy. I think I had way too much champagne for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I should have been drinking extra, extra water instead of just extra water. It just did not work out well. And I don't know what else I ate. But it was just a rumbly in my tummy. And it was it was hurting. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I've had gas this bad before. But it was like 15 years ago. Why am I going through this? This is like painful. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, there was that. And then I think I was just also exhausted. So I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to, but I did make that song uh, with my sister. And that was really fun. We vlogged it. And uh, it was interesting because, like I said before, my brother in law, he takes it serious because this is what he's passionate about mm. is music. And uh, when we were talking, he was telling us, like, he was very honest. This sounds like shit. And this is not sounding good, like how we were performing. Were y'all singing or rapping? Rapping. Okay. And so he's telling us, and then he had to come in the booth with us and, no, do it like this. And that him and the engineer were being very honest, which we appreciated because we were like, okay, well, we're here and it's fun for us, but y'all getting serious, so we're going to get serious. I like the song. It's a bop. What's um, it called? It's called Drip. Oh. And it's her song featuring me. We like it so much. Um I'll p- it's going to be on Patreon. By the time you see this, it's on Patreon. But we decided we're going to make a music video. Can I be in it? Maybe. Okay. It's probably going to be in Dallas. I got an audition. I'm oh, just saying girl, availability because <laughs> it's probably going to be in Dallas where we film it. But okay. I don't know. I really want her to come here. Uh, she but we're gonna come see what here. We're going to see what happens. She also has children. Bring the kid. Can I be in it? No. Okay. This is a... This is not an appropriate song. This is explicit. Can you just give me a little snippet? Where's my phone? Oh, I thought I was going to get a live voice. Hell no. Nah, bitch, we was in the studio. Okay. Somebody wrote this song for me, but I changed a few words. So I told him when we put it on Spotify, I want writing credit um, because I, I did change right. some words and I got video evidence of me writing in the stew. Um, but it was a lot of fun to do it. And I'm glad that he let us do it. Mallory was like, I want to make a mixtape now. And he was looking like, are you for real? But she was, she was like, this was fun. And it really was. I think y'all should try it. I was trying to convince him. I was like, you made this song up for us in like 10, 15 minutes. He said, and so I was like, this could be a business for you. Like song finch, but like for people who want to go and make their own song, Mm -hmm. do it. So I'm convincing him. I'll let y'all know. Uh, but I am posting it to YouTube, but it was really, really fun. Um, the song is a little nasty. So after we recorded it, we were so excited. We were sending the song out to everybody. It wasn't mix and master, nothing. It was just the song. It was like, well, this is a raw edit, but we want y'all to hear it because it was sounding good. It's like, this doesn't even sound like us. Like, this sounds great. I felt like rap shit, right? So we're sending the song out. I want to hear it. Well, I don't know where my phone is. I asked you. Why I asked you (laughs) them? (laughs) <laughs> just a snippet. She's so feisty. <laughs> Cause now I'm like, bitch, I'm trying to. You want to hear a little? I'll, I'll play a little snippet. Okay. Now this is. Um, I'm not in this part because again, I'm a feature. But whatever. I use a little auto tune. I don't know what they did, girl. I wasn't pushing them buttons. I was I was spitting hot fire. Okay. Um. And so then he was like, "Well, wait, because blah 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 blah." Okay, where's the master one? Okay. Let's see. Not me a rock god. <laughs> you see it. Ain't gotta tell these niggas nothing, they know I'm the bitch Ass fat tits, poppin' my ankle and wrist Make a rich nigga spin it, he stay on my clip Pretty face, and you know he like the way that it drip Yeah, the way that it drip And you know he like the way that it drip Yes, I'm that bitch Ass fat tits, poppin' my ankle and wrist can't gamble on a nigga for when things get dicey. Oh, Mary, no. Okay. Can't gamble on a nigga when things get dicey. Okay. I said, baby, we got some bars in oh. here. I said, Derek, now wait a minute. Sorry, heavy. Now wait a minute. You did something. And I was like, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. Um, speaking of, sometimes you don't want to tell family stuff because I feel like the way that some people worded some things, it was like, okay, you should have worded it a little different. But I was like, you might be onto something with this. So I'm a, but. He wrote that song in a couple of minutes. We basic. He was in a session for his own music. Y'all check him out too, please. Um, Where do we check him out at? I'll put links in there because I don't know. Uh, but his name is Heavy, and he's out of DFW area. He raps and he makes music, and he's really creative with the music videos. And he could target podcasters specifically, but you want a theme song? Period. Because I was about to ask him to make us one. 
Um, and I'm ready. I'm like, titties going to jiggle. And then I was like, you got you to gotta say something in here, you know, like ad lib and stuff. But then he was like, I have these ideas. I want to take some instruments out. I want to. I was like, I don't care. I'm just a feature. And I'm happy I got to participate. We're just happy we in the studio okay, with a pretty like, picture. Okay. I brought the chicken wings. Like I was talking about the snacks. Lemon I, pepper uh, off flats. Lemon pepper. And I did original hot. The engineer let us stay longer. I was like, see, you got to feed these niggas. So we brought them some snacks, brought some liquor. We was in there getting it together. And it was a really good time. And then after. After that, that's when my stomach started hurting. It was probably the wings and whatever we were drinking, all that tequila that day. But the song is a hit. Um, I will link it and let y'all know when it's released. Thank you, it, thank you. It probably won't be released until next month. Again, this song was for my sister's birthday, but we're going to drop a video a little later in the year. And I'm just really excited about it. And maybe um, this will be my new career. And I'll be like two chains starting my rap career. Well, okay, taking I'm definitely going to be something. If I can be in the music video, I'm just let me know ahead of time okay. when I need to be in Dallas. I'm coming. Because I, I want choreography. Be and I was like, you need to come out here. We could get Ashley. Ashley. Mm -hmm. she, you know, she was in color purple. Did you know that? No. Ashley oh, was remember, in remember the she told us she was I doing something for that. I until I saw the movie, and I was like, bitch, that's who did our fucking cocktails choreography. See? And then you just, all the people that we know, all the people that we've worked with, the family, everything is cool to work together. So anyway, y'all check him out. The song was so much fun to make. I loved it. I want to make some more. I hope I get to do more features on her mixtape dropping soon. I still don't know her rap name. <laughs> she was trying to- What was yours? I'm just Kiki said so. I'm okay. gonna keep it the same. But she was trying to decide between I think Money Mal, like she was at the Houston Live show, her pimp I'm get up. She was Money Mal or Mal the Batty or I don't know what the other one was. And she's like, I don't know. I was like, girl, you need to figure out. I your love name. both of them. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. That was so much fun. Y'all should try it out wherever you are. And if you need somebody to write a song because you're not no writer like me, just hit me up personally and I'm gonna tell him and I'm sure he'll do it for mm -hmm. a fee. Um, so that was cool. I spent some time with with other family um christmas was overall good madison got a little puppy she got a yorkie and he is so small his name is moki mochi moki moki and he's so cute i got to meet him oh um God. we did our secret santa who I, brought the yorkie her man um, like I don't know who got it for her, but the, I think they got it together. Okay. Like, this is our child, maybe. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. But the dog is cute. I loved it. Uh, she was very nervous because it was a lot of people. She brought him over for the Christmas party that my sister did. So majority of the time, she was in one of the girls' rooms. Um, or he was in one of the girls' rooms because he was like, it's, it's a lot going on. Uh, that was fun. And then hung out with some of my friends who were still in town. Um, also after, uh, what holiday was that? Thanksgiving. So my sister Mallory, I have several sisters, but the one that I'm closest to that I usually talk about is Mallory. Mallory went to cosmetology school. I think she started in high school to get her license and then finished right after. And she has been working in this industry for however long because she's, what, 32? And she started a long time ago. She went and got her instructor's license. She thought she wanted to teach, um, and she decided against it. She's been managing salons for so long. And she has three little girls and a husband. But she was like, you know, the time that I spend away mm -hmm. and – it's just a lot. And then she had like a few moments and I'm sharing all of this because I think that we can all relate. I know I feel this way sometimes and other people probably do too. Sometimes you just got to bet on yourself mm. with things that you want to try. So she opened up her own salon suite. She left, she quit her job um, around Thanksgiving the week after she was open and she has been booked ever since. Now um, it, it's called Studio M and I'll tag her uh, place, but it's cute. Now, she mostly does men's hair, actually, like cuts and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, very professional, very good. Like I said, she's been in the industry for a long time, and not just black people. She does white people, too, mm -hmm. all kinds of hair. But she also does women, and she said that that's something that she wants to get back to doing mm -hmm. is more women's hair. But I was so proud of her for doing this business, especially because um, a lot of people in my family get scared. And they are very much the people that's like, you need to get a good job with great benefits. And like all of this entrepreneur stuff is more so side hustle mentality. And this, I think that they find it hard to support things like that. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't think that they understand, like, I'm going to be making more money and I have clientele. It's not like I don't have clients. I'm right 
up the street five minutes away from the old salon. So I'm basically taking everybody that I had before and then I'm going to get other people. And they were really worried about her. And then she was showing me her calendar from the booking website. Mm -hmm. And it's just like everything is stacked up. And, and even like she had great relationships with the people at the other place. So they was letting her know on the low that people was looking for her and sent them her way. But I'm just so proud of her for doing that. And I'm proud of all my siblings. And then my brother, Joseph, he he's been doing more of like things he wants to do, like mm -hmm. to live his life that I wish I wouldn't have been so afraid to do, like taking more trips and just going places, meeting people and doing stuff and not just oh, I need to save my money. Oh, I need to worry about work and all of this other stuff. And then Madison, she is not afraid to quit no job. Mm -hmm. And if it's not serving her and she wants something that's going to make sure that she feels good, she'll do it. And it just feels good to see my siblings doing stuff like that. But I'm extra proud of Mallory for opening her salon. So it's been open for almost two months now. And she loves it. She gets to make her own schedule. She's not missing stuff with the kids anymore. She seems so much happier. And um, it's fun watching this journey for her. Now, I mm. went to the salon when she was uh, putting up the wallpaper and stuff. That's how I knew about that crocodile stuff. And I just sat there and watched. Um, I'm no good at that sort of thing. But mm. she has an eye for decor. And I was like, well, I can decorate the Christmas tree. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was cool to see that. And then mm. what else did I have to say? I guess that's it. Um, I'm going home next weekend. Uh, I missed my niece's cheerleading competitions. All three girls are on a competitive team and I miss it. I'm sad Having about nieces it. and nephews is expensive. It is. And I was like, I got them and then I got my own baby now. I'm just gonna have to see y'all another weekend. Um, so I'm going to see them this weekend. And then one of my best friends, her daughter is having a birthday party this week, this coming weekend too. So I was like, okay, I can knock a lot of people out at once. So I'm excited to go home and see them. I'm, oh, bless you. I plan. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless Where you. Where is you? Sneezing you with me. Where oh, bless you. You might need some allergy medicine. I think she has allergies, y'all. I'm tired of going Most to the Most dogs vet, do. Mm -hmm. Shai has them too. Oh, yeah. And, and also just because I like to put this out there when people have pets. I am a dog girl. I don't like letting people watch my dog if they don't love dogs. And so if you ever are in a bind, even if you're not in a bind and you're just like, hey, I think I'm going to go somewhere this weekend and I need somebody to watch a dog. Mm -hmm. You can trust Whitley with me. I am okay. like, I sincerely don't like when I have to leave my dog with somebody and they're like, she can't get on the furniture. Get away, little dog. Stop begging. You can't touch the kid. No, I am like, the dogs need to be free. We don't even deserve dogs. They are a blessing to us. Like the dogs are spoiled. My boyfriend feels the same way. The dog, he has two dogs. They're big. I told you, I sent you mm -hmm. the pictures. He, we adore the dogs. You're going to, they're going to be safe. They're not going to get eaten by owls. They're not going to be let off the leash. They're not going to get attacked by, we're they're not going to the around rules. eating bullshit. They're not going to, we're not going to stick them outside and you're locking them in the garage. because No, we treat the animals like better than humans. So yeah. just in case you ever like, well, I really you. need somebody to watch. I, Cause I also know the struggles of when you have a dog and you're like, dang, when I go on these paradise and vibe trips and I need somebody to watch her for 21 days. Ooh, yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. But it's like, mm -hmm. I love that I can leave her with dog people. And they're like, oh no, mm -hmm. we're good. My girlfriend, Lauren, she's like, she can get in the bed. She can play with my daughter. She's not like, I'm locking her in the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like that. And it's like, also she has separation anxiety and she's still new here. So does shy. You know, shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to scream and maybe bite. So I've been trying to crate train her her as the advice of her personal uh of her private tutor as i told you guys i got her um and he's giving me this advice but i think this is just going to be one of those things where i don't really care if my dog is a diva and a little spoiled i don't want her biting people and like cutting up mm. but if she wants to sleep in my bedroom i have a bed for her and i'm not moving that house around this inside is gonna stay right there and she could just i don't want to lock her up for what I it's do. already an apartment. Like, damn. I am totally into the gentle parent. Shy has, she she bites. She does bite me. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> we we work through it because she comes from a rough part of the world, mm, which is I'll Chicago. Mm, okay. And she's from Ohio. So I don't know what was going on. Sometimes I feel like they left her in the barn or something because mm. she gets very nervous when I leave and she breaks out of her home. I went to take the trash down the hallway. They were like, try 20 minutes at a time. I'm like, this is going to take three minutes top for me to go down the hallway, trash you, drop it off, come back. It's your shit. I come back. She waiting for me at the door. And I'm like, I put you in the thing. And then I bought her like this um, acrylic gate so like she can be in that space between the couch and like the bar 
so she can play but be contained and not all over the place while I'm doing something or cleaning up or whatever, she got some hops on her. I think by next week she'll be able to jump over the yeah. thing. And I, um, well, I guess I should just give it away because yeah, you should just sell <laughs> what it on point Facebook is market. it? Yeah, because the way that I look at it's like. I look, your your animal is gonna be like you. I don't want to be contained in the gate. What you doing, bitch? Mm-hmm. You in the kitchen? I'm in the kitchen. And I'm like, this is really just um, temporary until I can trust that you're not gonna pee and poop. That's really what it is. I can't see you everywhere. I'm doing something. I cannot look at you. You might pee and poop somewhere, and now I'm mad. Mm-hmm. And, and some pops do have to happen. I will say. Now, see, I didn't want to pop her, well, but now, now. Uh, last night the pop came you out because she busted out, and then that anxiety got to her, and it was little piles of shit, like little frosties. And I was like, I just steamed these floors. Yeah, you gonna learn patience real quick. Shy yeah. shit and pissed in I my pillows I this. behind now, them, and I didn't, em- I didn't realize it till I was embedded and nestled in my sleep. And I was like, why does it smell like pee? Oh, she dear. peed in the pillows and poop. This is when I first got her. Oh, we had to do a lot of learning, and I, it couldn't be gentle. That bitch mm. got body slammed. Yeah. Um, well, I'm trying the gentle parenting, but I have about 40 hours left, <laughs> and then that's over. I just didn't want to give her a life like that. Her name is Whitley Gilbert. <laughs> mm. She's supposed to be spoiled. Anyway, um, it's been fun overall, but it's been challenging. Send me your dog videos. And she, I need to get her hair done. She has an appointment tomorrow, but I haven't posted any of her TikToks and stuff because she won't look at the camera. Um, That's we've like got a new dog outfits. thing. Dogs already know. Like, they're like, you're not going to make money off of me, bitch. And guess the fuck I am because you're expensive. So we all work in my house, honey. And that's just what it is. Yeah. You can live You can live a glamorous yeah. life. She did better today. Now, once she got her clothes, um, she was feeling herself, I think. So tomorrow when she gets her bangs cut and gets her eyebrows done, um, I think she'll be feeling better. So hopefully we can launch by next week because... Mm. Maybe She's now we hot. can get more sponsors for pets. Maybe so. Um, I already reached out to a few companies. Good. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's enough of that. Um, we can move on to weird sex. And when we come back, we'll get into whatever we can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. This isn't even in America. This is in Italy. But it just, it sparked, uh, piqued my interest. So there was a trans man. He went in. He discovered he was five months pregnant. And Mm -hmm. so... (laughs) They call him a seahorse dad, which I don't really know if that's appropriate or not, but this is what's in the article. So he underwent a mastectomy while transitioning in Italy, and he was found to be five months pregnant. So this is someone who was born a woman? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. An easy way to remember it is like trans man or trans woman transitioning to, and then is what the new one is. Um, Okay, so the parent-to-be referred to only as Marco in Italian media, already had a breast removal operation and was preparing to get rid of the uterus when the pregnancy was discovered um, at a hospital in Rome. And uh, having discovered the pregnancy, the first thing to do is to spend hormone therapy because that's another thing. So he was still fucking niggas. Mm -hmm. I mean, trans people can be gay or Or not, you know, that doesn't matter. Um, so they have to suspend hormone therapy. This just sounds really fucking stressful and expensive. Um, the expert on gender therapy warned that the fetus could be at risk if not. Um, and if halting of the therapy is not immediate, there could be consequences. There were so many different things that they had to consider, but there have been a few stories. Whitley, there have been a few stories where this has happened. Whitley's a bitch way. Whitley. <laughs> What are you doing? Come now, here. see, that's why you're not supposed to be chewing up your leash. You're talking about it's okay. Mm-mm. Um, you feeling comfortable now? We've been here a minute. Anyway, um, I just think it's crazy that you went in for a surgery that is part of your transition and now you're pregnant. And what you going to do? And it's five months pregnant. Not you can like name five the baby weeks. transy. 
Now Medina. Anyway, um, I just thought that was an interesting story. So, you know, wh whatever's going on, if you are a trans man, just remember that uh, you need to be careful if you fucking niggas. Because people can still get pregnant. And then imagine that. You got to stop your hormone therapy if you're going to keep the baby. And at five months, I don't know what they do in Italy, but if you're in Georgia... You don't have no choices. You got it. That sounds very str Just I'm just think thinking about the ripple effect. And like, what if you were one of those people and people didn't know? And then now you're going to work. You got to go to work. You don't work from home. And people are asking questions. That could be very stressful. Oh, yeah. Just a cut lot. your titties off and turn into a man and you're pregnant. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's and wow. you're trying to do your transition on the, the bottom surgery. And you're pregnant. So you can't do that. Decisions. Well, I guess you you could and do a C section. I mean, it's just so much to it. Mm. <sighs> anyway, let's pray for Marco in Italy and hope that um, him and the baby are healthy. And I hope that the baby's daddy, um, the other one, uh, is a good daddy. I don't want to pray for the child because it's going to be a lot of confusion. But I also want to pray that we can find a, uh, a, I've been, this is actually something I've been looking into, finding an abortion doctor to come on the show. I emailed mm -hmm. a few. No one has responded yet because I, I quickly realized a lot of people don't want people to know that they are abortion doctors. And I also didn't know that some doctors do this on the side as a side hustle. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Yeah. So if you know an abortion doctor in your neighborhood, in your community, and you they want to talk and they talk or a lot. Or if you are one. Or if you are one, we would love to literally have an abortion doctor on the show just to talk about the details of abortion. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would make for great conversation. Also, if you have autism, I want to have an autistic person on the show. Have you watched Love on the Spectrum? I love, that's one of the reasons why I want, I love Love on the Spectrum. I just saw that the new season came out over the weekend. Um, well, that's when I saw it. I don't know when it came out, but I really enjoy that show. I think it's really interesting to see um, different people's dating experiences, mm -hmm. no matter what may be out of the norm for them and following them. Now, it does feel a bit like, well, damn, Netflix, like, the way y'all are cutting this stuff, like a Should big we be split. laughing? Is mm -hmm. that what you think? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Saboot. Saboot. Have you started watching it? Not this, the new season, I started it, but I've only seen the Saboot old people. Saboot going to have you cracking up. Saboot, said, Saboot is in Indian. He is an Indian man. He lives in an Indian family. That nigga is eating curry. He said, I don't want an Indian woman. He looked at the camera straight in the face and said, I don't want her to be Indian. He said it 10 times. And they were like, Saboot, okay. <laughs> He said, I don't want her Indian. The girl who's like an animator and really successful. She is not playing with you niggas if you don't have a, a job. She is a city girl. Yeah. She's like, and not just a job because last season the guy worked at Ralph's, which is like Kroger. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, uh. She broke up with him. He started crying. Yeah. And she was just like, okay, well, I really don't want to deal with this. Now that's somebody who's standing on business. She stands on business. Nothing Period. else, but she stands on business. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting show. It's yeah. a very interesting show. Interesting or to the if point you're autistic and you would like to share, please come on. Mm -hmm. and we would love to know about your dating experiences. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, do we even have time to touch on our topics today or should we just jump to cocktails? Five-ish minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a, real quick. <laughs> so we're kind of running over on time today, but... You know, hope y'all enjoyed that long episode from last week. So, some of these topics that I came up with were specifically for you. Oh, why? Well, because there have been, like, some people that hit me up. And I don't know if you've ever seen the comments where people feel like you don't share mm -hmm. about your dating life, your mm -hmm. personal life, or just, like, anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, as a Libra, I'll try to, like, balance out the emotions and see both sides and I was like oh, you know what I kind of see what you're talking about mm -hmm. so I was like I'm gonna interview Kiki <laughs> interesting and so we don't have that long so you mm -hmm. really getting the easy one how are you doing emotionally dating wise mentally all those things I would say lately I've been very stressed a lot of times I don't share a lot I think that I'm more sensitive than you or the listeners or anyone may realize and sometimes quite honestly people can be so negative um and if I do share something something small and people nitpick at it or 
try to twist. It just makes me want to shut down. And then honestly, I've said this many, many times. Um, I don't always date a lot. A lot of times I take time to myself. I'm not playing when I say that a lot of times I'm very selfish and I don't frequently date a lot. Like there might be somebody in my life who I care about mm -hmm. and who I have something with, but it's not like a lot of story worthy things. And especially if I'm not in a great place, I don't be wanting to share that. Um, I I do share some things sometimes, but I feel like it just goes negative and it becomes a Debbie Downer thing. And that's not what y'all want to listen to on cocktails. So I'm doing OK. I'm doing better. But I've been really stressed. There's a lot of things that happen in my personal life that aren't just about me. They involve other people. And that's why I choose not to share. I'm going to respect the other people in my life who have asked me not to share certain things. Um, yeah. And then it's just like sometimes it's irrelevant. Um, but today, right now, I'm okay. Thank you for asking. I'm going to ask. <laughs> um, have you been on a date lately? I haven't. You haven't? It's been a while since I've been on a proper date. When I tell y'all I'd be at home with Whitley, i really be at home with Whitley. Mm -hmm. And how you be saying you like to sit at home and be an ugly, that's how I was feeling. I felt like our hair looked the same, me mm -hmm. and her, um, all over my head. And I was just in the house and not really doing much, making uh, my doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of it. I mean, I went home to see family, but even that didn't really turn out so great uh, because I wasn't feeling well. But just trying to take care of myself a little better, the mental and the physical. Um, but yeah, I haven't been on a date in a while. And quite honestly, I don't know when I'm going to be able to go on a date if I can't bring my baby. You can bring your baby on most days. Just say she's a... What, um, but I don't want to bring her to certain places. Like, if it's a nice place and you get dressed up and it's not a casual, I don't want to bring her. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. Some places are not dog-friendly, mm -hmm. and I don't only want to do dog-friendly. So I don't know what I'm going to do. But honestly, going on dates and all of that has been at the bottom of my list. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what's at the top of your list, but would you want to come to church with me? Um, perhaps. What kind of church is it? Yeah, I don't know, because I didn't... I didn't, I'm not raised in going. church. I have, but I don't know what to like tell you what type of church. Like, what is the type of aunt? This young people and the pastor is fine. I don't well, when I say, I'm not trying to be funny. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not when even I, trying to be funny. I'm just, I don't know. When I, I have, say what kind of church it is, I mean, like, um, what denomination does it have? A, it's probably not. That's a really good question. I think it's not. I don't, actually okay. don't know. I don't even look into that. It's like, certain ones I wouldn't want to go to. That's all. It's called um, Live Atlanta. L I I V. And at first I was like, why is y'all making the, all the churches named after club? There's a church <laughs> called Dream. There's Destiny. <laughs> live and i did uh -huh. really did feel some type of way but i have been frequenting this church for i would say like the past four months now uh -huh. and you um, like it i like it bitch <laughs> i do Why like it because sometimes church is not always bad it's there not can be bad experiences but it's not always bad. i will say that my relationship with church stems from my dad my dad is muslim and so mm -hmm. i was raised with a muslim background a mm -hmm. lot of and it's not just like muslim where it's like middle eastern muslim it's uh Nation of Islam. A nation of Islam Muslim. So it's like you learn a lot about racism and you learn a lot about like how Christianity specifically like weaponized the Bible. Slavery is like a product of that. And so like sometimes when I'm doing like the church stuff, sometimes I get in. I literally already sent an email to the pastor. We had a phone call mm -hmm. because I didn't like that the white man was talking about the revitalization of the 1700s. And he and he was talking about it with like in a huge group of black people. And I was like, 1700s, this was like the height of slavery. Mm -hmm. Not okay. We're not in a world anymore where it's like, you can just be. Well, is he talking about balls and shit? Mm -hmm. Like balls, like gala ball. Like no, party. he was talking about just like the revitalization of America. And that does not include black people. And so one thing about me. Unless you're working like a slave. Unless you were slave. And so I had to, bitch, I had to send a whole email to them. I was like, baby, I got to send an email to them because they said to reach out if you feel if you feel like you need to say something. And I feel like I need to say something because I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get closer to God. I'm trying to do these things that like really, <laughs> they really do. I love doing this. I do. But I'm also a person that has questions and I'm not just going to like, be just listening and that's it. I have questions. 
And I sent the email and mm-hmm. he was like, I feel like this is more of like a phone call situation. And I got scared and I was like, well, I don't want to offend you. And then I was like, shit. But you were offended. I wasn't really offended. I was just uncomfortable. Because I understand that church people can sometimes be blind. But then I also understand like youth is not. We ask questions and it turned into a very beautiful situation. And it's just like, I have really enjoyed this whole process of I already know God, but like getting to know God in a more structured way mm-hmm. is helping me in my personal life. But I do be That's having questions good. because I did also go see the Book of Clarence. Mm. And the book That's of on my list too. Yeah, it was good. It was weird and maybe eat edible when you go see oh, it. Oh no, but I'm not going to remember nothing. You know I can't handle them things. I'm being yeah, there laughing or sleep. It definitely <laughs> sp- it makes you ask questions about just like what every specifically black people are believing and deciding to like promote in the Bible. And maybe Mm -hmm. everybody should be asking questions just so we can all have an understanding of what we're actually saying was truth. Mm -hmm. And And what you say you believe in. Yeah. And what you say you believe in. And I loved that the pastor of live, I did get a chance to like talk to him and like, he was like, let's have a real conversation. Let's Mm -hmm. not email. Let's talk. And let's have a real conversation about like some of your thoughts and some of your questions about like you know faith because I do look at church sometimes like well y'all want to make money you know what I mean Mm -hmm. it's very hard for me to take that out of my mind especially when this was used to like enslave people Mm -hmm. so the process for me and the journey for me is interesting and very different from probably a lot of you I feel like a lot of people just grew up in church I didn't that's not Mm -hmm. my background so I have a lot of questions not appropriate Mm -hmm. I guess for cocktails but (laughs) that's mine but it's real life Mm -hmm. and I think that even if you do grow up um they're gonna teach you not to ask questions but that's always been like an issue for me because it's like part of understanding is questioning things that you don't understand and so when anytime somebody tells me like you can't question it, it just is it's like well do you not know the answer is there no answer and (sighs) Those things just get very cloudy. A formal religion is that way. And then it's like, okay, well, you can be Christian, but there's so many different types of Christianity. And even a lot of the different religions, they all start from one God and then branch out depending on which child and prophet you followed. And it's just so much. And it's like, how can we all be on this universe and everybody's believing something different. Where's where's the connection? Mm-hmm. And some people are at war because the, somebody thinks they're right and the other person thinks they're right. But who is right? Is anybody right? I don't know. It mm-hmm. just leads to deeper thinking. But I do think it's um, important and interesting to dive into and not just learn about your own. Um, oh, some man. people do not want to venture outside. And I think a lot of that is taught. Um I don't personally believe in that. I think it's important to understand other people. And then you see where maybe some things just switched up in language and culture and all sorts of things. So many things are connected. I have Mm -hmm. said since the beginning of cocktails that I, when I joined cocktails, I would love to have a pastor on a pastor that is well-spoken and can, can answer questions and that is okay with like taking on this type of, you know, task. What would you want to talk to a pastor about? I would just want to ask him to break down some of the characters in the Bible that don't make sense. <laughs> okay. Some of the miracles that happen that don't happen now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I heard, I just have a lot of questions. And, like, I want to talk about the tithes. I do. <laughs> I do. I want to talk about the Bentleys that some of the people. It's going to be very uncomfortable. You know what I just saw recently um, on Instagram Somebody had, I don't know if it was tithes or an offering, but somebody had given their church a check. It was a Church of God in Christ church. Um, and they what does returned. That mean, a Church that's of God in Christ? A, that's a denomination. Okay. So like there's Baptist, there's Catholic, there's non denominational. So there's no uh, Methodist, there's so many different things. And different people have different like customs. And some of them beliefs are slightly different. Some people are more strict than others, XYZ. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, they wrote her a letter back and returned her check to her. 
and told her that uh, she wanted to divorce her husband and didn't want to come in for counseling. And that was against God. They said that she was, it was like she was posting stuff on Facebook or something that wasn't of God. And like all of these things, like really just going through, they had numbered items of things that she was doing in her personal life. And they said, we are revoking your membership to the church. And I was like, dang, God, don't Jesus, me. return your check. Jeez Louise. That's and that's crazy. the type of stuff that don't really be making sense because sometimes I'm like, well, y'all got Bentleys and Jets. Jesus didn't have that. That that person probably didn't have a Bentley or a Jet. Maybe that's why they're married. I don't know. Even if he had a BMW, Jesus didn't have a car. <laughs> well, I mean, all churches aren't like that. Like, I know um, my grandfather ain't never had no Bentley or Jet, I wish. But mm. then he'd probably be a corrupt person. He really did care about the people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I sounded upset. Sorry, I was just thinking like a different flash of what life could have been. Well, I had a Greek you have uh, grandpa. A, you have a paved way into heaven. That's not how that works. I wish. Uh, still working on me. Do you think you're going to go to heaven? I hope so. <laughs> it's not looking so good right now. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I hope so. Um, I hope that my name is in the book. Um, I'm working on being better, doing better. And that starts within. And so I just I just got to continue to do that and try and do the right thing Mm -hmm. and be a good person to others. Um, The formalities I could do better if it involves paying tithes. If I got to pay my tithes and y'all going to check to see if I paid them, I didn't. So no, I'm be outside of the gate. Hey, because I can't get in the club. And if you um, gotta pay to get into the gates, first of all, well, you're supposed to tithe. You're supposed to tithe, and I don't be tithing. I'm not. And my grandfather (laughs) said something to me one time, like, "You just need to just send something so we can keep your membership active." And I was just kind of like, "I mean, if you want to dismiss me, dismiss me. I mean, I'm not." You need something? <laughs> Let's rather send it to a person. I don't know. But like these, I don't even have checks. So I haven't even that. joined the church yet. I'm still trying yeah. to figure it out six you months get later. Baptized. If I'm, I don't know. You need to be on a wash day. What? <laughs> hey, I need to be. How do they baptize at that church? Have they you seen a baptism? You, I did. I they did. have a pool inside? They don't. They like a baptismal pool, not they, a pool pool. It's a pool pool because they don't even have like a home for the church yet. They're doing it out of a high school. That's what I'm saying. Oh. I'm starting with them from the. I really fuck with I grassroots. Say that. Yeah, yeah, cuss a lot. I really we fuck with them. But mm, you really like them. I do. Mm-hmm. And they you dip people's it. head in the pool in a pool in a little blow up pool outside of the high school. Like the kids? It's a kid. Like the up? Like the? It's above a lifted. Ground? Blow up pool. Interesting. But Jesus is present. Mm-hmm. What do you think Jesus is going to say about it? Because <laughs> I just feel like he's not going to be happy with anyone. I hear him right now. He's saying, I'm not pleased. Cut it out. I know he's not pleased. I feel like he's going to be like, y'all done got it. Well, he's going to look at me like, right. you got titties. Why did you I don't do think that? he's going to care about that. I think the things we've said and done. Imagine if at the gates, it was like a replay of every sin i would be like, you know what? I'm going to just head out. I know it's going to be hot. I'll leave these clothes And it's like here. a very curated, crafted clip from GP. GP gave God. No. The- <laughs> That's going to make it worse. Because he's just going to cut the highlights. Imagine you think, not even a you go to the gate and you're, he's showing you your highlights. He shows you your grandma's highlights. And you thought your granny was in heaven. That bitch is roasting it. <laughs> well, I would feel, I would feel more comfortable. I know I'm going to, wherever I go, I'm going to know somebody. I won't be alone. That's how I feel, honestly, mm-hmm. too. If I, go I to don't want to go down there. I mean, if if that's what well, is going to. hot is? <laughs> hot, bitch. And it stinks. But I just feel how like. Because um, it, it smells like sulfur. You ever smell sulfur? Well, how do you know that's what It's it, in the Bible. I mean, I didn't go, but okay. I'm just telling you, based on the teachings, that's what it smelled like. And who wants to smell that? Ugh. I had to put sulfur eight on my scalp before because of dandruff, and that shit really stinks and it lingers. And you couldn't we, just get sell some blue. Well, these were old people helping me mm. many moons ago, and I was a kid. I didn't have a choice. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I just mm-hmm. I gotta get my life right. Maybe this is gonna be the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry everyone. <laughs> it can be in the book. Sorry. 
on and that note. And actually, we don't have advice. Um, we're the out advice of time. will be on Patreon. And the advice is also to get your life right. If you would like to go into the Christian heaven, if you something else, well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know the rules there. Um, but I'll be praying for you and please pray for me. Maybe you know somebody who can do a favor. <laughs> to ask my granddaddy, please call him on the main line and tell him what I want. Please. please. Okay, you guys, and that's it for this week's episode. If you want to hear more advice, more cocktails, more experiences from us, different guests that we didn't have on the regular pod that are only available on Patreon, you want to get the Patreon live experience, make sure you head to Patreon, patreon.com slash cocktails. If you want to travel with me, make sure you guys hit our appropriate links to come to Fiji. You guys, whatever trip you are picking, doesn't matter. Travel is very important in life. See something new. If this is a, you're dating someone new and you don't know what to do with them, be different. Plan a date that involves travel, nigga. Mm, that's a commitment right there. It is. Mm -hmm. But test, put, put it to test. Mm -hmm. It could be the thing that really just sets, sets it off. Yeah. Set that bitch off. Stop being mediocre. Plan a trip. Go to St. Lucia or go to Fiji, bitch. Woo! Okay, well, you could also just go to Instagram and catch our pictures of wherever we go, whatever we do, the clips of the show, all that good stuff. Um, follow us on Instagram at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean D. And until next week, you guys. Goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.